You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. We're talking about dental implants today. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Frank Lamar. Dr. Lamar, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Randy. How are you? Good, good. Now, I know you brought a lot of photos, so we'll, we'll get to as many of those as we can. Uh, but first, for people that don't know your practice, uh, I, I guess you focus a lot on, on implant dentistry. I mean, who's the typical patient that's coming in for this type of uh, Well, our average patient has uh, a history, maybe since childhood, of having dental problems such as uh, decay, gum disease, loose teeth, uh, many of them are walking around nursing infections. So there are people who are really being affected by uh, the overall health of their teeth in their mouth. And they're looking for some way out. So there are many patients who have already lost their teeth. They're wearing dentures. They know they're, they're, they're compromised relative to how they uh, their confidence, their ability to smile and, and function. Function is a big thing for them. The ability to eat certain foods. So they've heard that there's a, a way to improve uh, and maybe get their teeth back. And so they're looking at those options today. They're a little bit more informed than they used to be. Okay, good. So no more dentures, is that true? I mean, if they don't want dentures, they don't have to have dentures. So is that why people go to you? I mean, they're trying to avoid the typical denture? Everybody knows a denture is not what we ideally want. Uh, a denture is an acrylic or plastic replacement for teeth. It's not a great replacement. Done well, they can look good, but they don't actually function like real teeth. Okay. Now, is it true in your practice on the day of the procedure, they can literally walk in with no teeth and walk out with a full arch of teeth, upper and lower, that don't come in and out? That's true. We can, we can take somebody who either doesn't have teeth or has a compromised set of teeth, and in one day, they can walk out with a brand new smile. Now, we should mention that everything we're talking about, you teach other dentists. We do. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, we have. Tell been. me a little bit about that. We have developed a, we call it a protocol. It's a way of approaching a patient who either has missing teeth or compromised teeth, and in a very fast, quick way, very simple way, we replace their teeth. Um, and um, so we teach this protocol. We the have- dentists all, all over the country. Uh, they are the uh, most qualified implant dentists in the United States. And when they're ready to learn to do uh, what we call a full arch replacement, they come to us for training and they learn the protocol. And um, we've been doing that for about the last 10 or 12 so years. So you, you've developed the protocol for, for this to be done very quickly. That's right. Is that right? Yes, yes. We've Like two or three visits and they're done. Uh, we've, we've gotten it down, believe it or not, to just a few hours and just a couple of visits. And that is in contrast to 25 years ago when we started doing implant dentistry. Now, are, and we're talking about no more dentures today and things like that. But in Rochester, are there really a lot of people wearing dentures? You, you have no or idea. Or headed to dentures? You know, the average person doesn't know who's out there and what they're dealing with. You know, actually, it's kind of like a like a, a little secret. And those people that wear dentures, you might not know they're wearing dentures. But uh, like how many would you say? Well, Rochester, New York is a, they say it's a million people surrounding areas. You could literally fill a professional football stadium with the number of people in Rochester, New York, that are wearing dentures. Wow. Quietly wearing dentures. And then there's the people who are trying to prevent having to wear dentures. And everybody hears dentures are not the easiest thing to tolerate. So I've had people who have been who knew they needed to have their natural teeth removed 10 years ago. And they won't do it. They're living with the infection and all the inconveniences of unhealthy teeth only because they don't want dentures. And so those folks are, are, um, uh, are just, they don't know there's another option for them. And so those people that come in, right, bad teeth, can't eat or chew or whatever, and you give them brand new teeth. Is this one of those things where they say, you know, I wish I would have done this years ago? Uh, everybody says, I wish, I, first of all, I wish I knew that it was available before, or geez, you know, I, if I had done this 10 years ago, life, life, life would have been different for those 10 years. And that's true because life changes immediately when you have that, you're, you're back to who you used to be when you had natural teeth. And for some folks, the last time they had a healthy natural smile was when they were adolescents or when they were in their teenage years. Is that right? Well, if dental implants are so good, why aren't they doing it? Why aren't they all doing it? 
Most of them don't have a dentist. I mean, if you think about it, if they have dentures, they're not going to the dentist every three or six months. They're not, they don't have a relationship with the dental practice. So they really don't know. You know, the second reason is they don't want to go to the dentist. Um, people who have lost their teeth, think about it. They've had this cycle, years of, uh, you need fillings, you need root canals, you need crowns. Oh, you're going to lose those teeth. Now, now, now you need bridge work. The cycle of all of these past experiences has got them to a point where they really just don't want to go to the dentist anymore. And they think that the denture solves that problem for them. But it creates this other issue, which is they can't um, eat or chew, uh, laugh out loud. You know, I had one woman who said that she can't, she, she couldn't yell at her kids anymore because she was afraid her teeth were going to get loose. Um, you know, you think of a turkey sandwich. You know, we take that for granted, right? You go out, you have a sandwich, and you bite into a big sandwich, and you pull. People with dentures can't bite into a turkey sandwich. And, they, and when they go out to dinner, they pick and choose exactly what they think they can eat, not actually what they want to eat. So it gets to be this, this, this lifestyle that is designed around the fact that maybe they can't do what they wanted to do before. You know, another reason why people don't do it is because uh, the question is always, at my age, am I worth it? Hear that all the time. Well, they say that. They do that. They, I've heard it at age 60, 70, 80, 90. It really doesn't matter. There, that's a common misconception. Well, how old can you be to do this? Uh, we just recently finished a, a, a young 93-year-old uh, about a month ago. Why would a 90-year-old want to do this? Why wouldn't they want to do it? They want to eat. They want to socialize. They want to be part of all the things that are going on. I had one 90-year-old tell me one time, he said, you know, at my age, what do I have to look forward to every day? When I get up, I'm thinking, what am I going to have for breakfast? At breakfast, <laughs> we talk about what we're going to have for lunch. And at lunch, we talk about where we're going to go for dinner. Everything socially Good point. is surrounded about, about where you're going to eat and what you're going to eat. And imagine that you can't enjoy all of the things that your group of friends are enjoying. But statistically, are the implants more likely to fall out if you're old? No. The irony really? is, you know, I've, I've had people say there, there are a lot of misconceptions. Age. Is age related? Will the implants not work for me? Not true. Um, women are afraid that osteoporosis is an issue. Not true. Um, the, our success rates with dental implants are just as high as on a 90-year-old as they are on an 18-year-old. Yeah, but isn't is it true if you've been wearing dentures, let's say 20 years? You don't have enough bone to do this. Is that correct? Uh, no, that's not correct, Randy. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it, you know, I mean, that's not correct. I mean, in fact, um, that's the misconception. Even so much as there are people who have lost their teeth because they have bone loss. Therefore, they think they don't have enough bone for implants. And the irony is that most people have plenty of bone to do the type of procedure that we're doing with Highbridge. And... And very rarely do we find somebody that, that makes that, that we have to actually, believe it or not, we can grow bone if we had to, but rarely needed. There are patients who have been told that they don't have enough bone by maybe their own dentist. And it may be that they don't have enough bone for the experience level of the, of the doctor that's giving that advice. But there are a lot of techniques out there that can make that not true for that patient and where they can have plenty of bone. So these people can be old or, or, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, the and, age, and really, Randy, the age has nothing to do with their ability to have implants and, and to do the procedure that we do. Now, you know, one of the things, because you pioneers that this hybrid system that's being used across the country. Yeah. It's a way to do dental implants very quickly. Give them a full arch of teeth that either are permanent, don't come in and out, or a snap-in, snap-out option. Right. And one of the things you said on the phone is what you do most people can't afford. The people that have these problems, but you've actually made it less expensive over the years. Our goal, Elaborate on that. Yeah, our, our goal over the last 15 or 20 years uh, has been to solve a specific problem. And the problem is, is that implant dentistry back in the day was so expensive that the people who needed it most couldn't afford to actually have it done. That was the irony of it all. And so, there's this, uh, you know, we talked about the stadium full of people that need this kind of work. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has to, the, the cost of this treatment has to come down over time 
for the people who need it most to be able to have it done. And you've done that with this hybrid system? We're, uh, we charge half of what we charged 15 years ago is the cost of what it is today. Mm -hmm. and, our, and our goal is to keep improving the technology, using some of the new technologies that are out there to continue to drive down the cost for our patients. Is that right? Yeah, now, that's... you brought photos. What are we looking at? Well, these happen to be some of my very favorite patients, although I have right. a lot of them. Okay. Uh, but they're just examples of, I guess what you would say is the transformation of a before pretreatment versus after with hybrid treatment. All right, let's take a look. Um, the first one is uh, Laura. You know, here's a woman that comes in who has uh, uh, half of her teeth remaining and can't use them, can't bite into a sandwich. Her big thing was is, is that she could not eat almost anything and she had to cut things up real small. So her teeth hurt. She was concerned every day that something was gonna fall out and she wouldn't be able to socialize. And so she, she really was living in fear every was day. Was she headed for dentures? Like typically she, she was, She was told five years before that she was headed to dentures and she waited five years after she was told that because she just could not get over the fact that she needed dentures. And so uh, her daughter heard about us and, and brought her in, brought Laura in, and, um, and she was uh, surprised to hear that there was something that could convert her in as fast as we could convert her over to healthy teeth. And one day we extracted her teeth and we put in her teeth and she walked out that first day with a beautiful smile. This is very nice. Thank you. You know, I want you to notice something on that smile. Uh, the smile completely changes the way she lights up. I mean, she, <laughs> yeah. she's really, an, she's an attractive woman, really pretty woman, but it's the smile that actually completes that look. Without the teeth, and actually I have a friend who's a plastic surgeon, and he's always, he, and we talk about these, these extreme makeover things that they yeah. used to have on TV, and as a plastic surgeon, he would say, you know, Frank, the, the most impressive part of that show is always the smile not all the other work that they've had done. And so you can see just with this beautiful smile how much Laura changed from before to after. You know, look at the before smile. It's, it's aged, it's uneven, there's, it's asymmetrical. There's a lot of things that are really just not right about the, the way those teeth have worn, if you think about it, over a period of 50 or 60 years. And the after, you see that we call that a smile line where the teeth follow the curvature of the upper lip. You designed this. We do, every case that we do is designed through what, uh, a procedure that we call a smile analysis. And we use the face, and we use the shape of the face, we use the complexion, and we design a smile that should fit a patient so that nobody notices that they're not their real teeth. They should just think they have a beautiful smile. Now, when they see it for the first time, they must be surprised. Uh, when they see it for the first time, and that, that, that moment is actually, it's priceless. Okay. Because, because there's a point where we'll, we'll sit them up and we'll hand them the mirror, and you just see this look come across their face, and um, uh, there are some tears usually involved. Let me show you this next patient, right. Dan. Dan came in having never been happy with his smile, and the teeth that he had were hopeless. We call that, you know, a hopeless dentition. So the teeth are not going to be here five years from now. Can't save them. Can't save them. Okay. Matter of fact, he's tried to save them. So there's been years of trying to save them. But there's a point in which I always call it the straw that, that finally does it, right? that, 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 where they say, okay, I, I'm not doing this anymore. And so, you know, when we talk about, you know, what's the big complaint? I'll say, Dan, you know, what's the, what's your, what's the thing that affects you the most about these teeth? And generally speaking, I have them put it in the order of importance. And he'll say, you know, normally confidence, the ability to smile freely. In his case, it was he couldn't chew anymore. So what were his options? He could have had a denture. There was absolutely no way he was having a denture. He wasn't, he, he didn't even consider that an option for himself. Okay. And so we talked about our hybrid solution for him. And, um, and he, he actually, it, it didn't take him but a minute to realize <laughs> that that was, that, that was his only option. So this is uh, the after, what would you do for him? Uh, well, oh, good looking teeth. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, actually, if you saw them on the street, would you know that those were not the no, teeth that he was good. born with? They look good. Because they don't pop out. They don't, they don't stand out in any way. They, they're just a nice, pleasant looking smile. So these are like locked in or snapped in? Snap they are. Out? Well, the term is fixed, meaning that they don't come out. 
So yeah, these teeth don't come out. They do not come out. They, he treats them like his regular teeth. He, he, he does normal home care like anybody would do. But if we ever had to do anything to them, I can take them out. How soon could he eat after the procedure? He can eat later that day or the next day. He can go ahead and start eating, and uh, he's not really going to miss a beat. And, um, and when he's healed up, what could he eat? I well, mean, I, he could eat anything you can eat, Randy. Is that right? Yeah, you, I mean, you think I mean, you about... you could chewy foods? He could eat... Yeah, he, he, can, eat, he can eat steak. He can, he can bite into that turkey sandwich I was talking about. Okay. He can, he, he can eat an apple, corn on the cob, anything you With want. With his front teeth? So he can eat with his front teeth. I mean, okay. that's the beauty about permanent teeth is we have the ability. We don't chew with our front teeth. We actually bite with our front teeth. We tear with our front teeth. So if you're going to have teeth that are actually acting like teeth, you have to be able to use them in the same way. And with these teeth, with, with Highbridge, you can do all of those things. And look at how different he looks. I mean, these pictures were taken weeks apart. Yeah. He's, yeah. He looks like a totally different guy. And I have to say, he's kind of looks sophisticated he's in a, the after. Yeah, he's a, I mean, he's a, he's a good looking guy. He was always a good looking guy, no offense, but he's, he's, he's a, you know, he's got a great smile. He, he just, he looks like a totally different person because of his teeth. Okay, good. We have time for a few more. What Thank else you. do you have? Well, let's, we, uh, I want you to see this picture of Anne. Anne's teeth were at the very end of their serviceability for her. She knew that they were, she couldn't chew. She was missing her back teeth. Uh, she had two areas of infection. So she was hurting when we saw her. And that, used, and that really was her primary reason for finally coming in after all these years. There's usually something that brings them in at the end. Actually, I always ask that question. You know, what finally made you call us? For her, it was pain, it was infection. But, you know, if you look at all the things that were bothering her along the way, she was very unhappy with her smile, very self-conscious about her smile. She actually works in the legal world. She actually represents people. And she was finding that it was a little harder to interact. So there was a whole bunch of reasons why her life had been affected by the, her teeth. So her, her options are uh, all good options for Ann start with no teeth, no natural teeth. So they really that, what that leaves is dentures uh, or in our office, high bridge. So she, she thought about two seconds about the denture option. She realized no that way. that was not something that she was ready for. She was too young for it. Very you know, active woman. And so um, in a matter of uh, one day, we removed her, her existing natural teeth, and we put in her new teeth. Wow. And she walked out with, uh, in that one day, uh, a new smile. You know, I'm just curious, Randy, when you see the before and after, yeah. what do you see? Well, she looks younger, for sure. And it is a pretty smile. Uh, I'm, I, I tell you, I'm, I'm very proud of that smile. But, right, it completely changes. Actually, if you saw her... You might not recognize that woman on the street if you knew her from before. It's like she could be the daughter of the other person. And I'm not trying to side with you. People need to know. I'm not trying to side with you. Yeah. But I think anybody would look at this. And, and, it, it, and on the phone, I, t I told you. I'm a skeptical. You know, it's like it's just teeth. But you could see where it changes your appearance yeah. as well. So she could eat chew. And they don't come in and out? They don't come in and out. Those are permanent teeth. Those are her teeth, as she calls them. These are my teeth. So, so those are her teeth. She, can, she does what everybody else does with a healthy, natural set of teeth. And uh, she keeps, and actually we hear this a lot, the people who know her best say that she seems like a much happier person. And Good. she probably is happier, but she actually looks happier. I love this story, Randy. This is Carla. She's young. She's young. I think she's in her early 30s when we met her. Um, she came in with her husband. Again, it happens a lot. The spouse will sometimes kind of help them come in. They'll make the appointment for them. They'll bring them in. So when she came in, she, we clearly could not save her remaining teeth. And her big thing was her smile. Her, her, her ability to, to smile was, was no longer. So she wanted to have the smile that she remembered when she was a kid. And so we designed a smile specific for Carla. And if you look at that smile, it fits her face. It, it, it's youthful. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. I want to show you Jim. All right. From the time he was a young man, he had periodontal disease. He had treatment after treatment to try to save those teeth. When I met him, his teeth had lost all of their support and they were mobile. So his chief complaint was loose teeth. And he didn't like the fact that as time went on, those teeth created spaces as they got looser and looser. So for him, it was really function and it was also his ability to smile. And look at the after. Nice. Totally different man. He, he, um, and so these are a full teeth supported by dental implants? They are. Upper and lower implant supported teeth. 
So is this the newest trend in dentistry? And for people just tuning in, we're talking about replacing missing teeth with dental implants. With, the, with us, we have Dr. Frank Lamar. We, we should mention, you teach this system. You teach dental implant dentistry to dentists across the country. That's right. I've they been... use your protocol that allows you to do this very quickly. That's right. We've, we've trained over 200 doctors over the last uh, eight or 10 years on how to use our protocol, both surgical and prosthetic protocols, to take patients from either dentures to permanent teeth or from hopeless teeth to permanent teeth in a very efficient way and a very cost-effective so way. So when you're looking, if somebody's watching this and they're looking for a dentist to do their dental implants, do you think they should ask for this term, are you using the hybrid system? Obviously, you're biased on this, but... Yeah, the, the, uh, so I am biased on it, but certainly um, if a patient has the opportunity to, in, in someplace other than Rochester, seek somebody out who's hybrid certified, what they'll know is that not only is the treatment done a certain way, but with a certain kind of implant, and the actual teeth are fabricated. We actually have a manufacturing facility right here in Rochester Okay. Uh, that actually makes all of the teeth for all over the country, and they'll know that the quality and the standards of that hybrid laboratory are everywhere within the United Good States. Good time for a couple more photos. I hate to rush you, but let's try to get the last couple in here. Uh, I'll tell you, I like this one a lot. Eric, we just actually, we finished Eric just a couple weeks ago. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Eric, um, his big thing was the smile. Uh, he would not smile. That's gotta be unusual though, uh, that before photo. Uh, well, not in our practice, that's not unusual. That's a very common situation. People who are but living- you never with, see it. You don't see it. They're probably good at hiding it or they're just not socializing. They're just not getting out like you would think. They're not the people that you're, you're, you're out having a good time with. All right, so this guy would have had dentures, and now he's got this. He would have had dentures. In a matter of a, a very short period of time, he's, he looks just like that today. And what he has said was <laughs> is that now his wife is posting him on Facebook all the time. He said he's never been out there as much as he is. So these people, that they get their teeth, and they're starting to be selfie people. Absolutely. It completely, Facebook, it completely, yeah. All they of irritate sudden, everybody with all their selfies. <laughs> I think he's actually proud. I think his wife is, is as proud as he is of the fact that that's the guy she probably married. I want to show you Michelle. Mother, uh, wife, small, great family. Husband, husband is really trying to help her get back to who she was. And actually, she'll say her, her teeth before when I met her changed her. She used to work. She used to be out. She used to be part of her, all the groups with the daughter and the school groups and all that. And she had completely closed herself off from a lot of those things. Because of her teeth, really? Totally changed her life, totally changed the dynamics of how the family interacted. And after, she's back out there, she's, she's the person that she used to be. And those, those look like kind of porcelain veneers. They look like natural teeth, but really nice natural so teeth. So in the before, those teeth had to be taken out, so no denture, and she gets these teeth. That's right. Is that right? Yeah, and a very, yep. Yeah. And so we go from teeth well, That's a beautiful looking to high bridge here. Yeah, thank you. And she actually had a part in the design of that smile. Because we because we we ask, you know, how do we want these teeth to look? Do you want to look like they were the teeth you would have if you, you know, if you were born with them? Or do you want to make them even better than that? And believe it or not, there are some people that want them better than what they would have been born with. But but it's completely up to the patient how they look at the end. And they always get an opportunity to okay them and we'll have their family come in sometimes and make sure that everybody's happy with how they look. And here's, uh, we actually call him T. His name is Terrence. But T came in. Um, his teeth were absolutely well beyond the point where he sh should have still had them. Didn't want a denture. Has implants now. Has his smile back. And is. Uh, That's a good smile. That's looking good. He's a, he's a good looking guy, isn't he? And uh, this is an interesting one. Mary, her husband, actually, a little bit of a sad story. Mary's husband, before he passed away, made a point to say for her to get her teeth fixed. And so nice. when I met her, it was after she had lost her husband. And what she had been doing while she was a caregiver was she was actually fixing her own teeth in order to be able to sort of keep them going. Is that what I'm seeing on that before? That's what you're They're seeing. Kind of putting, she was, putting, she was putting some materials that she was buying just to keep them from falling out. And so when she came in, it was, it was kind of tearful. She wanted to do it because her husband had said to do it. And I mean, look at how I mean, she's wow. a pretty lady anyway, but look at how sophisticated she looks, how much younger she looks, almost like she just lost 10 years. And those aren't her natural teeth. Those are 
Supported by dental implants. Upper and lower implant hybrid restorations. Very nice. Thank you. And she can eat whatever she wants. Whatever she wants. Although we do tell them, stay away from the bones, stay away from the <laughs> ice, stay away from the hard candy. Okay, okay. Usually they listen to us. And here's Jennifer. She, she's her, young. She, yeah, and un, unfortunately, at that age, at 26, she's, she's young, and she's been told she needs dentures at 26 years old. Imagine that. Wow. So um, she found us. Uh, I believe her father found us and uh, brought her in. And, um, and it, it took her a little while to finally go through the treatment, but when she finally decided that it was time, uh, that's her after, and uh, it wow. completely transform transformative. You know, we should mention too, you know, because I have a lot of notes about you, but that how it's normally done, this dental implant thing, correct me if I'm wrong, is you go to one place that does the surgery, you go to another place that puts the teeth on top, and maybe somewhere else for the imaging. You do it all right there, you we, and your brother. Yeah, the Elmwood Dental Implant Restoration Center has been built to do it all under one roof. So we have all of the capabilities and all of the, the training to be able to go from start to finish both the surgical side, the prosthetic side, the, the imaging side. Um, we, we even have our own uh, CT machine within the office. So everything is done in-house and it's what we call a coordinated process. So everybody knows what everybody else is doing at all times. And you're, the, a you're, the spe you're a specialist, you're a prosthodontist. I'm a prosthodontist. So you think whoever designs the teeth should be a prosthodontist? I guess that's uh, an obvious Well, the training that we have as a prosthodontist is, is for the replacement of missing teeth. And uh, I, I always like to say, the more you're trained and the more you do, the better you get. And so, yeah, our, our specialty is to, is to replace smiles and rebuild whole okay. mouths. We're out of time. Uh, final message, though, to the somebody that is either headed to dentures, like the people here, or they're currently wearing a denture, and maybe they think their denture's fine, but what do you say to them? No, we invite them in. All it takes is 45 minutes for us to tell you what the options are, what's possible, and at that point, once you know, once you're educated, then, 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 then you can pick a path. If there was a try-in period, like test driving a car, like, hey, take a fixed set of teeth denture wears over home for the weekend. Uh -huh. You think anybody could go back to their denture? No, actually people don't remember or realize what it is they've lost because they accommodate to whatever, wherever they are. But in fact, they're functioning. People who wear dentures, by the way, have a biting force of about 10% of normal, but they get used to that. Okay. So, you're, so they would never go back to that. So, so, so this is good. Okay, look, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Randy, thanks uh, for having me. It, and, and when they go to your office, do they get to see you on the consult? They do. Everything starts with, with an initial conversation, a consultation with me. So there's, and you say you even have more photos on your website. We have a lot of photos and a lot of educational material on our website. So you can go to our website and spend a lot of time just seeing, seeing what we do. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Randy. Great info. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.